Parag has improved so much in the last few months. Right, right. He's playing with so much confidence and everything. Mm. So I, I always use the term for the current generation that they're a golden generation. So, you know, after um, Queen's Gambit, which by the way was very successful and yeah. thing, Yes, well, I look up and I do think like that, like Beth Harmon, but I don't know that every chess player looks up and thinks like that. You know, we're not all. So, Arun, first the obvious question, you know, world, you know, India's uh, number one in India since 87 and now your the, your prodigy Gukesh, is it a bittersweet moment that he's now today's India's number one? Is it a bittersweet moment because you've held this position and you've also mentored this kid and today he's taken over like you know he, for the time being at least he's India's number one. A bittersweet moment for you? I'm surprised that it remains slightly bittersweet. It's uh, moderated by the fact that, yes, I've worked with him. Um, he's with us in Westbridge Anand Chess Academy, so clearly I've contributed to that as well. Right, right. And uh, a couple of years ago, I semi-retired. So um, for all these reasons, it doesn't uh, really rankle or anything. But at the same time, uh, it's funny. It becomes part of your... Uh, it becomes part of who you are. If for like 30 years, you have something. You don't think of it as a temporary feature. <laughs> and then suddenly to have someone, you know, solidly above. Uh, he's at least three points above yeah. me. So um, that's a new thing. I felt a couple of years ago it was just a matter of time. So it's intellectually, I understood it's going to happen. Yeah. But still, there's a little, little bit. But when that, when that happened, a bit of a thing. But you must also be proud of this kid, right? In the sense, like, you know, when you mentioned him, obviously, like, you know, you knew there's something in this guy. Mukesh is the first uh, person uh, uh, to cross, the first Indian to cross um, me in the ranking list. Yeah. And Pragnananda is the only one who's ever been in a, a semi-final of a World Cup or who has ever been in the candidates. Yeah. yeah. So there are some overlapping things happening yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... I felt it was inevitable, but you tend to think of something as gradual and then it's all kind of happening in the same yeah, month. Yeah. That is unusual. Yeah, I think I, I would like say like, you know, Kohli, like how Tenilka would look at Kohli or something, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's passing the baton. Yeah. Uh, yes, in some sense. Yes. So, I mean, when you look at, say for instance, I'm using cricket as an analogy of, by default. Sure. So, if you look at the great batsmen, you have to start with, say, in the contemporary game, last 50 years of Indian cricket. Say Gavaskar, then sure. Tendulkar, then Virat Kohli, and then whoever else comes up, comes after that. So there is Manuel Aron, and then there is Vishwanath Anand, and, and from Vishwanath Anand, the whole narrative of chess in India changes. And now what we are seeing, uh, Anand, is a, a massive surge of Indian talent. I don't know the, the eight, nine, ten in men's and women's section in the in the, in the world chess now. And majority from Tamil Nadu, right? Yeah, majority of them are Tamil Nadu. Yeah. Yes, majority from Tamil Nadu, but still we have uh, players from other parts of the country. And I think the game is gradually spreading out in India. Uh, maybe phones contribute to this yeah. as much as I uh, think that earlier, if someone was curious, but there wasn't any, some way uh, nearby you could play chess, you gave up. Now you find it on your phone and then you continue. But. Um, it's a very different vibe because I am used to being the only Indian in a tournament right. for very long. Whereas all of them, not only they see each other, but they they are rivals in the same yeah. tournament. Yeah, yeah. So it's incomparable to my experience. Even right. when I uh, when I go and watch them, I realize it's a very different vibe for them. They are not only looking at others; they're looking over their shoulders as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I actually correct, kind of correct that with something what Ashwin said, right? He says, you know, now in the though they they're not a part of a cricket team, like you know, these players are individuals. Ashwin said, within the cricket team itself, they are like you know no longer friends, like kind of colleague. You know, there's a bit of competition. So among these guys, there's competition, which is good. But you know, but your time, you know, in a, you said in an interview to the week recently that you know you now choose the you know the matches that you want to play or the championship that you want to go to, which is because you've done all that and now you want to wait on your terms. Is that, you know, when did you realize that, you know, when you said enough is enough, let me just do it on my terms? It, uh, it happened at gunpoint of the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I thought, you know, this is not so bad. I've, one of the things 
that again, you think it's inevitable in chess, it's going to happen one day, you, you know it'll happen. Uh, but you never really want to start thinking about it, it's retirement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, around 2019, I had this hard moment. Sh should I keep competing at this level for this long thing? Because the payoff is going to keep getting lower and lower. Yes. I'm going to be working much harder just yeah. to stand still, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, is this what I want to do? Is there other things that I want to try? Because it'd be a great time to divert man. So right. uh, then the pandemic happened, and I got a test run, so to speak. And I realized, well, this is not that bad. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah. I could not originally imagine a life. I mean, you, you have follow a routine for 40 yes. years. You can't yes. imagine a life that's yeah, not. Yeah. It doesn't revolve around that routine. And suddenly, for 375 days exactly, I did not go near an airport. Mm. So I came back on June 6th, 2020, yeah. from Bangalore, yeah. and I left on June 16th, uh, 2021, right. for Zagreb. And in that one year, I did not go near Minambak. <laughs> I did not go <laughs> near the airport. Right. So that's a shock. Yeah. So I, um, I got to try it, and then I realized this is nice. Let me accept a couple of tournaments. I still yeah. like playing, and uh, yeah. uh, some nice tournaments. Why, you know, why turn that down? But uh, I'm not going to play the World Championship anymore. I'm not yeah. going to play the World Championship. I'm not going to play the World Cup. I'm not going to play the Grand Swiss. I'm not going to go into the pathways to qualify. Right, right. Uh, I'm not going to do any of that. But uh, a few tournaments that I w choose to play, of course, I will play and try to enjoy that. Because you enjoy the spirit, the game, and that's why you just want to continue. But, that, but you're not looking at your points and all that. It's just more of a... Your passion, right? I think that's what it's come down to, you know, at this stage of your life. Mostly, um, you have to care about the points. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm also able to let go of it faster. Yeah. But yeah. does it whet your appetite now when you see so many youngsters from India, and of course the challenge globally, uh, not directly for you, but in the in the game itself, uh, there's so much more happening. There's so much more activity. Does it kind of tell you, you know, let me throw my hat again in the ring, uh, or you're past that completely? Mostly, it, it's not a realistic thought, yeah. but every once in a while when you see someone else make a move that you saw as well, you think, well, I could be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't seriously question my uh, decision or the place that I've come to, right. because uh, the same argument stands. Even yeah. three years ago, I could play a great game of chess, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. The, that was not the question. The question yeah. was, can I do this consistently, consistently enough um, and deliver often enough for it to be worth it? Right. And I thought, I should acknowledge that I'm 10 years older than the nearest guy I'm competing with, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes 15 or 20 years older than most of the people I'm competing with, right. and it just takes a toll. So let me uh, move to a reduced schedule. So it doesn't change that. Uh, besides, I, I get my chess fix. Yes. I get to go as a FIDE official, as the <laughs> yeah, FIDE yeah. deputy president, and attend these tournaments and be part of the action. I get to mingle uh, through commentary. Yes. So I do commentary for some events. That way you get to thinking about chess a lot and sharing it and all that. And I do get to compete from time to time. I played the Grand Chess Tour. I played the Global Chess League. Um, and so I'm getting my fix. Yeah. And it's just slightly reduced. But uh, in the meantime, I've learned that you can spend more time with your family, you can spend yeah, more time yeah, at yeah, home, and yeah. that's also been a learning process. Yeah, yeah. Is, 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 Sorry, go, go ahead, go ahead. Is age a factor? I mean, does it make a difference if you're 10 years, 15 years older uh, than other rivals, or the, the largest group now, maybe of a certain age group, and then you will be 10, 15 years older? Does it really make such a big difference? Yes. Uh, in chess, many players are starting to peak into their uh, uh, 40s and uh, some are even peaking I mean or appear to be peaking in their 30s I mean they mm. are not much stronger than the ones who are 20 and then you think well uh, if five years down the line what's that going to look and you're not sure so um, it's already it's already happening that's not, that brings me to one question two questions actually one is you know you said about this age thing and about peaking but you also said see when Magnus was like you know playing at the championship with you you had said that he was peaking at that time and probably you were like I would say you're coming down after mm -hmm. your peak so obviously it's just something which is due with age and also the time spent so can you talk about that when you know that thing about he was definitely peaking at the time he was much younger than you Another question which I have is someone your age, someone like an idol shot, is now playing an international in the senior senior thing, you know, which is very, yeah. you know, it's different age. Yeah, yeah, different same age as uh, Anand, but he's he playing uh, the five years older. Five, and there's one one gentleman who's younger than you who's also playing the senior senior tournament, I think. Uh, 
Well, Nigel Schwartz and there's someone. Okay, it doesn't there, matter. There could be possible. Yeah, there could yeah. be someone from 1970 or something yeah, who's yeah, playing. Yeah. But uh, yes. Yeah, but you know the, the fact that you know they they are playing in the senior league, but you are still in the regular thing. So and also you mentioned about you know I know Carlson speak and you coming down at that time. So when you're coming down at a certain time, I know you're saying there's a peak. Can you still compete with these youngsters? How does it happen? In the sense, see, it's not it's a mind game. It's and you know. And uh, your wife has said it's a physical game as well. So, how do you how do you kind of compete in a sense when you realize you yourself sort of realize that you're coming down, and these youngsters are peaking, and you're still part of not the not the international circuit, you know, the uh, you know the elder circuit like Nigel Short, but still part of the regular thing. How do you manage that? So, when, what happened to me roughly at the time when I lost my match to Carlson was that um, the problem solved itself. Up. I qualified for one more World Championship match. I went through that. And then after that, I would need to win a candidates to qualify. Right. So when I played the um, candidates, I was still able to make a very, very good uh, right. show of it. In 2016, I could have still qualified. A few things had to happen, I, so I was there. I finished second uh, in the end. Um, but after that, even the candidates, the pathway to the candidates wasn't clear. I would have to do it at a World Cup or a Grand Swiss. I tried the World Cup, didn't work. A couple of years later, played the Grand Swiss, and I realized it's receding. And the thing that used to take the most energy out of me, gave me the most stress, the World Championship uh, event, suddenly wasn't there. And, and then you realize, wait, now I can cope with what re what's remaining. Right. So in a sense, my schedule became a bit softer. Um, so I played, now I'm playing top tournaments for many years. I played it for the next uh, seven or eight years. And uh, subsequently I thought even this new uh, arrangement is running its course. Yeah. And I'm soon going to have to think. In 2019, there were some very searing disappointments. Yeah. Um, exactly in, in Kolkata, I basically had one of the easiest tasks to qualify for a super final. And I went, I couldn't do it. And I realized ah, some things are just uh, slipping out of things. So let me, um, um, that was one of the incentives to think, well, maybe I should just start playing less because, right. uh, you know, why do something that's uh, taking too much from you? So I did that and now I'm very happy with uh, how it is. And at, like I said, at every stage, I got to transition it quite nicely. And I, after dropping from the World Championship, I was able to play seven years of the best tournaments. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. playing the Tata Steel events. I was playing... Um, Zurich, I was playing uh, um, the Grandchester Tour, and so you know I was getting my fix of the best tournaments. And right. uh, now at at 50, uh, I think it's it's nice to have a reduced schedule, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and this is enjoyable. But it's time to have our times uh, enough uh, time for other things. Yeah. So whether it's OGQ or um, especially Waka, which I took on yeah. during the yes. pandemic. Um, the FIDE deputy president, which I took yeah, on only yeah, last year, yeah. so that's one year running. Yeah. Um, I, I still get the social aspect yeah, of chess. Yeah, yeah. I still get to see old friends, and say I'm not cut off completely. Right. But uh, competing, you know, I, I'll take it slow. <laughs> Talk about friendship. You said old friends once in a while. Any of the older, like, I don't know whether, and you're a, you know, like a soft guy, you know, in like, you know, you're not like one of these guys. So do you, who, how do you like, you know, your equations with someone like Carlson or a Casper or a Kappa. Are you in touch with them? A phone call away or do they call you? Are you a friendship? Are you a friend to them or they're just like, you know, chess opponents? Not at all. Uh, Kasparov uh, has become incredibly warm. I mean, we have very good time whenever we meet uh, because he comes to all the Grand Chester events, right. uh, you know, for the opening ceremony and he, because his company co-organizes it. So I get to see him there. We have very good chats about the good old times and so yeah, on. Yeah. Um, and... Um, Is he a fun Boris, guy? Is he a fun guy, Kasparov? Uh, Kasparov? He's a lot of fun. Yeah. He has some very interesting uh, things to say. He's always got something uh, witty to say. He's uh, he got lots of yeah. politics. Yes, he's now. Uh, to be honest, I thought he was more of a speaker yeah. mm. and an activist than a politician yeah. because he his thing was to highlight things rather than bring them out. But inevitably, last year his situation changed where. His activism it itself became a kind of politics. Right. So now he's it's true, he's very firmly entrenched in, in that area. What about Kapo? Kapo I've simply not seen forever. Uh, I did not see him um, since the pandemic started. 
Mm. And then um, he, well, as got, of last year, he's not been traveling much. He's also now he's 72 yeah, right. maybe. Yeah. Um, and he had a health crisis earlier yes. this year. Mm. So I have not uh, been in touch with Karpov. I have uh, friends who keep me informed. Right. Um, someone with Boris, like Boris Gelfand, I'm very close yeah. to. He is also, he's helping me in Vaka as well. Okay. Good. And um, then Vladimir Kramnik uh, is someone I keep in touch with. Right. So we used to play some non-castling events in Germany. Uh, now we, I'll see him in a few days again. Right. Um, but I hang out with a lot of the Carlson? younger generation. Carlson? Carlson, he's quite busy. I mean, when we see each other, we, we are friendly, but we are not very close. Yeah. Um, I've never... I've never been really close to him in that sense. Mm. Uh, certainly, we are very civil and friendly and all right, that. Right. But uh, he's also in his own world and doing a lot of things. So, right. so there's, you know, from the outside, you know, when people look at the world of chess, there's a lot of intrigue and, you know, about players, chess players. Mm -hmm. What What are these guys? You know, I mean, it's such a cerebral game. You don't go out into the field and compete in the sense of most other sports. So, and I think it's largely to do with the kind of image or the stereotype that Bobby Fischer created in that great contest with Spassky. Uh, reclusive, a little idiosyncratic, little temperamental and stuff like that. And then, you know, chess players were kind of perceived to be different from what you associate with other sports persons. What are chess players all like? Are they, you know, kind of like regular people or are they, you spend hours and hours by yourself? What do you, what, is, what happens in the chess player's mind? Certainly self play, chess players are self-absorbed and very focused on their work. But I think not more than anybody in any walk of life. Uh, probably both of you are very focused on your work and you know if uh, I intrude on that moment when you're busy, then so many may, only so much mental bandwidth you have for that. <laughs> and the same with chess players. Uh, Bobby Fischer, it's true, he changed the image a little bit because it's not that most chess players are idiosyncratic uh, thing but uh, the problem is people remember the ones who are <laughs> and, and really that's what happened with Bobby Fischer that suddenly everyone got tired with it. Chess players um, generally are kind of university types they're the kind who like to th sit and think uh, now thanks to computers they're more of a IT gaming crowd mm -hmm. uh, coming in so interesting mix is happening uh, the sport is also changing yeah, um, yeah. I want you to call demographics yeah. but um, the, it's still it draws a certain kind of person, certainly. Right, right. But they're just good fun. They, you get, uh, with chess players, I've had almost all the conversations I would expect I could have. Right, right. Uh, so they're very diverse, and uh, you get them from so, so many different countries, are, cultures, and all that. So there are characters also. There right? are characters, yeah. and uh, if you've been in chess world for a long time, you see them as individuals. Yes. And it stuns me every time there's a famous movie, and everyone acts as of, uh, treats us as some collect collective noun again. <laughs> so, you know, after um, Queen's Gambit, which, by the way, was very successful and yeah. thing, yes, well, I look up and I do think like that, like Beth Harmon, but I don't know that every chess player looks up and thinks like that. You know, we're not all yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> manufactured in the same, yeah, yeah. In the same fab. Yeah, yeah. Please understand. Yeah, so, exactly. We're well, individuals, actually. Yeah, exactly. So. But, you know, but like you were talking about computers and, you know, like, you know, like, you know the pandemic. You know, do you think more people took to chess because, you know, like you're cut off, there was like nothing here with the computers and chess is probably a game that you could learn on your, like, you know, with the computer or anything. And do you think a lot of people got into chess during the pandemic? Let, forget the world, let's talk about India. Short answer, yes. Yeah. Um, it, it turned out that for chess, the moment had been right. Yeah. Mm, First yeah. of all, internet bandwidth was the highest, well, obviously it's highest it's ever been because yeah, that's a yeah, yeah, fairly yeah, straight line. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if the same pandemic had happened in 2010, we wouldn't have noticed it. Right. Uh, by 2020, uh, everyone had phone, everyone had 4G. You, you could really follow these things. Second, um, chess had much, much better apps that you could just download and start playing in. So I'm talking of someone who just learned the rules, wants to play three games, and then maybe tomorrow he'll do it again. That's it. But they were able to do it effortlessly, yeah. no right, friction. Right, right. Um, third, it could, they couldn't have made it with the pandemic in mind. But Queen's Gambit uh, was produced yeah. uh, and released around this during the pandemic. And so, and it turned out there was probably some latent desire. A lot of people had come into connection with chess in the past. They're connected to chess somewhere in the past, mm. 
and they've forgotten about it. And it's been sitting in their to-do list for years and right, years. Right. And suddenly they had the time, the phone, and this, all they needed is somebody to tell them, you know that chess thing, yeah, maybe yeah. I have time for it now. Yeah. And the Queen's government comes along and reminds them, and it seems that everything is buzzing. So suddenly, it, uh, basically everything ha happened Came to be together. in the right place yeah. at the right time for chess. Yeah. And that effect was huge. Yes, you imagine, right? You know, you know Anand's grandkids or something. I was reading a book about, you know, everyone sometimes written about COVID, you know, all the negatives about COVID, COVID did this. And then there's one positive, helped Indian chess, yeah. you know, <laughs> which is good, which is good. By the way, one. to answer your other question, it was global. It was global. It oh. was global. India certainly came along. Hmm. And um, uh, the idea that they, let's say, YouTube channels uh, talking about chess, again, YouTube usage went up, yeah, so yeah. those trends connected. Mm. Um, but it's a global phenomenon because uh, a YouTube channel is simply available worldwide. Yeah, so yeah. nobody is uh, held back, yeah. and um, just content just became available globally. So yeah. everyone everywhere was accessing it. It's gone right. up in every single country. Yeah. Right. So let's talk about these present lot, right? These guys you know, now that you know, world champions. So what's your take? Prague has improved so much in the last few months. Right, right. He's playing with so much confidence and everything. Mm. What do you? What message do you need to send a guy who's going to be in the if, candidates? If no. Candidates, congrats. <laughs> the point of the World Cup is not to win the World Cup; it's yeah. to qualify with the candidates. He's right. done that. He's done that. As far yeah. as I, I'm concerned, and probably he's concerned, that's great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what about the others in the fray? You know, there is, you know, there's Lukash and Arjun and all of them. You know, how, you know, you know, how are they coming up? I think almost uh, all of them can tame, take heart from uh, uh, the performance in the World Cup. Yeah. Literally every single, single Indian player who is, for instance, going to represent India in the Asian Games yeah. or going to represent India in the next Olympiad mm. uh, can come away from Baku feeling very proud of themselves. So that's quite rare. Norm yeah. Normally you think, I've got five horses, one of them will do well. Yeah. You don't think I've got five horses and one of them will do slightly less than the other four or something. But which is new, it's, right? Because India never had that in chess. It's just Anand, 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 Anand. And suddenly you have these young guys coming in, right? So, but you know... The just chess revolution, yeah. in, in a way, which has happened. And the inflection point is, of course... Yeah. You know, so I, I always use the term for the current generation that they're a golden generation. Golden generation? Yes, they, they are a golden generation. I'm throwing in the title early, but yeah. Yeah. they are a golden generation. They're all in the 2700 plus group. Mm. Right. And they're all under the age of 20. Yes. That, that just does not happen. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, uh, it's really something special. Right. And what this means, and the reason I call them a golden generation, is they're going to spend the next 10 years at the top. Right. With varying career trajectories, right. of course, yeah. but right. they're going to spend the next 10 years uh, being rivals and colleagues and friends and everything. Right. So, uh, for Indian chess, that all goes very, very well. Right. So, Anand, when you burst on the scene internationally, not just nationally, and then you became, you know, iconic, winning championship, world championships, etc. Was there then this, uh, the onus that you had to carry whenever you participated? How did you cope with that or tackle that? Because, you know, we are a very passionate country uh, and the expectations from our heroes is just so enormous. It's a large country in terms of population also. I felt I was playing for myself. I, yeah. I certainly uh, was proud to have the flag. But mostly I felt whatever I do, I, I do, an Indian is doing for the first time and let's just have a good time and right. see how far I can get. And so I was cushioned from that. And second thing, um, chess players in those days didn't find out what everyone thought yeah. right away. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think is the real problem today. Yeah. I'm not even sure that I would want to be in this atmosphere. I like that right, atmosphere right. very much. Yeah. That even if I had a good game, you know, if months later somebody said, by the way, I, I was very happy you did this, I'm, that's good enough for me. Um, I think uh, the intensity with which people follow these days, and it's, it's social media driven and all that, uh, I think that makes a big uh, uh, difference right. in how it's seen. But of course, it's good for them as well because yeah. it'll uh, yeah. amplify their careers. What about monetary, money-wise? Right now, you have like you know, I don't know, like you know, like something like I'm just trying to run a parallel, like IP or something. Money comes in, and you know, you get people out from you know small towns in India coming into the big stage. Chess now, like you know, they talk about cricket in Bombay, right? Now it's also in, in Tamil Nadu, in Madras, in Tamil Nadu. Do you think you know people from other parts of India will come in and if money comes into the sport, will money more money come into the sport, help chess, more Gukeshes and they're coming coming up, and more Vishnu Anand, Anand's, you know, will the money come into the sport to attract people? 
I believe that the number of people who can make a living from chess alone, by this I mean that uh, things, ancillaries around chess yeah, included, yeah, yeah. but being a chess player alone mm. uh, has quintupled in the last five years. Mm. Right. Um, so you can be a coach, you can be an uh, author, you can be a journalist, you can um, stream. There are just so many uh, extra ways to um, uh, earn a living that getting into chess is a much safer option now than it was, has yeah, ever been. Yeah. And uh, um, it's fantastic, which means yeah. that a lot more people will be able to take the decision with much less, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, hesitation. Yeah. Uh, but we are very few chess players playing for Saudi clubs still. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I so there's still some yeah, room to go. Yeah. So. But the corporate kind of, you know, kind of, you know, you were NIT and all those kind of things which helped you. But you know, our big corporates coming and kind of saying that's, you know, there's this golden age of chess like you call it. You know, let's be part of this and encourage, you know, this golden age, you know, to come up. Is that happening or you still, we are still, the chess is still lagging there? No, very much. We get a lot of uh, companies that are sponsoring chess players from much earlier age. Uh, here, it's we say come corporate money, but I believe it's also this Indian startup mentality. Mm. A uh, lot of people are much more spontaneous, and it takes a smaller group of people to sit around a room and, and just say, well, let's do this or let's do that. Yeah. These yeah. kinds of projects start much faster. Right, right. So we have um, uh, groups that just, WhatsApp groups that get together. There's one called Group E4 mm. uh, that we work with sometimes. They They donate money to... Uh, support young uh, players. Yeah. Uh, you have companies that back a player and just say, you know, we'll support you by, with right. so much for so many years. Right. Um, Westbridge approached me and said, would you like to do something for chess? And I came up with this project. They have locked in for some months. Uh, and also the number of sponsors who organize chess events mm -hmm. keeps growing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we get, um, in India certainly, as I mentioned, there's much more spontaneous support. That's good. Almost crowdfunding mm. uh, meets mm. corporate, meets startup, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, and worldwide as well, you, you just see uh, chess players, very few of them come uh, being strict, very handicapped in terms of right. uh, um, the training necessities they, they've mm. been able to access. Right. The different formats, so, um, is, uh, it, Different skill sets, different temperaments. What I mean, can one player excel in all different formats? The rapid, the longer. In the long run, I think no. I think you just have to be a better chess player. Yeah. Um, if you if you're a kind of chess player who needs more time to find a good move, that means you're better in the slow version of the game. Mm. But it also means that you could work on finding it faster. Mm. Uh, and if you're a faster player then you could work on looking harder, yeah. looking slower. So briefly, yes, I, I will accept for a year that somebody is better in this format, that format. But in the long run, I think the formats have to converge because your chest strength has to keep up with whatever is thrown at you. Okay, then talk about the present draw, right? Uh, Prags and uh, Rukesh okay. and Arjun. Like, how do you, like you know, what you mentioned that they all have a passion for chess. And you mentioned one is like, you know, it's got a good calculator. But how you know in a how would you tell each of them to concentrate? You know you would know their strengths. You would also know since you've been you know champions since '87, you know five-time world champion. You would know exactly the intricacies that goes into this. So how would you like tell them to channel their energy? You know each one. Like if you take the top four or five that you want to, if you want to channel their channel the energy or their you know the way they work on the game. How would you go about it? How what would you tell them? I would share my experiences, especially yeah. psychologically speaking yeah, yeah. and emotionally, right. how I dealt with um, right. those things. But chess itself has changed so much. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, what we tried to pass on to people was, how do you find better moves? Right. How do you uh, think? But now, when the computer is giving you the best moves right away or the f quickest answer, mm -hmm. the, the thinking almost has to change. How do you remember what it tells you? Mm. How do you pick out what's essential? So mm -hmm. the, the skill set has changed. Also the nature of chess. Mm. If uh, I can tell someone, you know, don't do this once in a while. Right. But if, if it's a legitimate format, right. for instance, Blitz and Rapid and Online Chess, these are all legitimate formats. There are events happening yeah, and things yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, I never used to play them when I was yeah, young because yeah. first of all, they didn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
so how does my experience compare with them? So I have to be careful. I can share what I think mm. and leave it in the air, but mm. I can't be too prescriptive. Okay. I can't say you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that because they honestly can judge it much better. Again, some of people of my generation find we are running in a slightly new world and we mm -hmm. also need time to yeah. orient right. ourselves. So right. mostly what we can share is um, the struggle that you face and uh, the moment that it goes wrong and the moment it, uh, you do the right thing, those are the kinds of things you can share. That will never change. Yeah, I mean, so that now that you're part of FIDE, you know, like, you know, what role, like you said, you know, now they can learn from the computers and stuff like that. But as, a, as you know, playing a senior role in FIDE, how would you, like, you know, help these, help chess, for the, like, for the, like help chess overall? What is FIDE doing? So, well, the, the ticket I joined, uh, yeah. the FIDE president is uh, Arkady Dvorkovich. What uh, his ticket was, uh, grow chess, mm. um, especially women. Mm -hmm. And um, what I am uh, trying to add to that, or my area of thing is try and make it happen in India. Right. Um, so for me, the Global Chess League with Trek Mahindra was a big thing because I was working on that even before I joined FIDE. Right, right. And as an advisor, and then I uh, think, and, and then I also competed so in multiple roles. Um, I work with the Tata Steel event in Kolkata. Um, so like that, you know, I, I stay involved with a lot of uh, initiatives here. Uh, but basically get more and more people to compete and uh, improve the conditions for women because uh, there is a huge participation gap yes. in chess yeah. 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 for yeah. women. Yeah. And we've got to, at some level, we've got to recognize that they don't think it's the obvious thing to, for them to do or they don't take that decision in the same numbers as the boys. Yes. Right. Uh, and, you know, how do we convince more of them to take part? Yeah. So one of the things FIDE is working on is to raise um, the prize funds at all women's tournaments. Mm. Right. Uh, because in the end, you've got to make something more attractive yeah. for yeah. it to be yeah. A, yeah. a sensible decision yeah. and so on. And uh, that's one of the areas we focus on. And you see a lot more parts. Like when you see, you know, probably even a 60-40 you know, or a 65-35 happening in uh, women and men. At least some improvement. When you, by which year do you see that happening? You can't have such firm deadlines. I mean, yeah. a lot yeah. of this. A lot of this is also cultural. So uh, yeah. Yeah. you've got to go slowly. But for the first time, chess is reaching people even without us knowing, because the the internet and this thing makes yeah. uh, this quite unpredictable. So in a sense, we also have to manage the growth we are thing, and that's one of the challenges we are facing. Yeah. But we've yeah. done very well. Our uh, budget has been higher every single year. Price funds are higher every single year, and. Uh, uh, I think we've been able to tap into that quite nicely. Right. Um, and, you know, so one thing is to participate in the growth of chess, which is already happening yeah. spontaneously. But see that our, uh, our yeah. focus areas are happening as well. Right. And uh, try to work with uh, every new sponsor or organizer who wants to do something and try and help them create a compelling event. Yeah. I know it's giving tags, but uh, you see India as an emerging superpower in chess or already one. Do you see the, you know, is there some kind of a uh, kind of plateauing or a decline in Russia, you know, which used to be a powerhouse? Do you see that power matrix changing? Definitely, but I believe that uh, a country the size of India, if it decides to take something seriously, we are going to uh, become important. You, I mean, we are, every sixth person on the planet is an Indian. Indian. So, first of all, uh, you know, our tournaments, they don't, might not even, um, you know, bat, we don't bat, bat our eyelids uh, at watching them. But any, anybody who comes from any other country thinks, I've never seen a tournament all so many people. It's like my whole <laughs> island here. So, you know, uh, so f there is that. Uh, but this is genuine quality. We're not just flooding the place. Yeah, this yeah, is genuine yeah, quality. We yeah. have produced an mm. amazing golden generation, like I said. Yeah. We have, I believe, some very, very talented female juniors. Yes. Wow. So hopefully in a couple of years, we'll be able to replicate that. Wow. And if that continues, I think it's quite likely that chess will continue to be in the public eye. You know, if we have three or four Indians representing us at the top, inevitably Indians will keep following the game. And so, yes, India is a superpower in chess and uh, will continue to be a very important uh, country uh, for uh, you know for the game even globally yes. thank you so much Arun. thank you so much for your time thanks thanks, thanks. thanks. thanks.